How's it going guys? Vlad here and welcome to the extended version of the first Arduino tutorial where I, I'm i gonna basically discuss some of the limitations of the Arduino, why did I choose these resistors in particular, how to calculate the values of the resistors, um, what you should pay attention to in terms of drawing currents from the Arduino, so stay tuned and make sure to subscribe. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna discuss is is the second connection that we've made which was the pin 12 of the Arduino going through a resistor followed by an LED and a ground. So what what exactly happens in this case? Well obviously if you set the pin to high you're sending 5 volts through the resistor to the LED to the ground and if you set it to low you get a ground followed by the resistor, the LED, and the um, ground. So in this case, the LED emits light, and in this case, there's nothing. So let's take a look at this 5 volts and this ground, 0 volts in this case. Well, if you go to the Atmega 328P data sheet, which is the microcontroller on the Arduino, you're going to see that on page 313, these voltages are in fact not exact, but in case of a high, you get a guaranteed 4.32 VCC, and this is the supplied voltage to the Arduino. Normally it is 5 volts, and in the case of a low, you get 0 volts to 0 0.9 in case of 5 volts. So 5 volts to the Arduino. So what you need to realize is that first of all uh, the, the voltages on each pin are not going to be perfect whether it's high or low and second of all this also depends on a variable which is also not perfect. So this depends on temperatures, um, how many pins you have connected to other components etc. So just be aware that this 5 and this 0 are really not going to be ideal. Okay, so now that you're aware of that, what other limitations do we need to consider? Well, each pin on the microcontroller is also limited by a max current of 40 milliamps. And this is a per pin value. Additionally, the total current cannot exceed 200 milliamps and this by the way this is drawn or uh, absorbed so this is going out of the pin or going into the microcontroller so what does this mean is let's say you have your Arduino board and you decide to make several connections well each one of these connections cannot exceed 40 milliamps and the total current drawn from every single pin of your microcontroller or the Arduino cannot be more than 200 milliamps. Alright, so let's move on and see what we have in terms of the resistor and the LED. Okay, so let's say that we're ready to connect our circuit and we have a resistance, an LED, and we know that we want to put it to the ground. First of all, know that it is also possible to make the following connection. So the resistance going to the LED and going to 5 volts. So in this case, the current is only going to go when the pin is set to, high, uh, set to low. So this LED is going to emit light when this is low. And in this case, the LED is only going to emit light when this is high. because there is a voltage difference. So, first of all, how do we calculate the value for this resistance? Well, the calculations is the calculation is V equals IR and we want to find R which is V divided by I. So what is what is going to be the voltage? In fact, it's not going to be simply 5 volts, but you also have a voltage drop on the diode. And typically, 
this is going to be 0 0.7 and I mean this depends from diode to diode you can have some that are 0 0.5 some that are 0 0.2 or high voltage drops for high power diodes so right away our voltage is going to be V minus VD divided by I um, secondly what is the current that you want to draw through the diode well to simply light it up a typical value is typical value would be 20 milliamps uh, some may be 10 some may be 50 uh, high power diodes can draw 2 amps so from that we get 5 minus 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.02 let's just use that value as an example and that's that's what I used in my circuit so that's 4.3 divided by 0 0.02 and that equates to 215 ohms now what you need to realize is that sometimes you're gonna get a numerical value that doesn't exist in the real world and what that means is um, they just don't manufacture a 215 ohm resistor so your best bet is typically to apply a higher resistance which means a lower current on the LED um, for this purpose okay so also what is the difference between these two circuits well if you're going to have an application where your LED is going to be mostly uh, high or mostly low you can determine what is the power loss that you're going to have in your circuit and you can, and you can essentially select the one that's going to result in less uh, heat dissipation but we're going to get into that a bit later this is uh, slightly more complex than I wanted to cover in this tutorial okay alright so the last circuit that we've connected on pin 4 was a push button push button as well as a pull down resistor pull down resistor okay so what is first of all what is the purpose of this pull down resistor well while your push button is not pressed this pin if not connected to anything if it's just a floating pin which goes to the button it is uncertain what is the voltage level in this case so it may be low it may be high and for an input that is very impractical because it's gonna to toggle on its own uh, you could put your finger next to, the, to your input and create some kind of a uh, disturbance and you're gonna create a charge which is gonna put the spin to high uh, to high so to 5 volts and you don't want that you want it to be either low or high when you press the button only so what you do in that case is you calculate a resistance value with which you can connect it to the ground and when you press the button you would be connecting it to 5 volts and this leaking current like there's, you're obviously going to always lose some current on these, uh, on this resistance it, it's not going to affect your circuit that much so for this resistance how do you calculate the minimum and the maximum value well first of all you know that the leakage current for the microcontroller is 1 milliamp so what that means is uh, you're constantly sort of losing current from the spin or you're constantly absorbing current from the uh, into the pin so you need a, at least a resistance that is able to supply uh, that same uh, that same current so what that means is uh, the R value is going to be V divided by I and it's going to be 5 volts divided by the current which is one mil uh, one microamps so that's five divided by zero point. okay now let's see what that gives us so obviously that's five mega ohm 
So on one side, you can get 5 mega ohm. But on the other hand, you can give this, you can set this resistance to very low. But remember, as we talked before, you have 40 milliamps drawn at a maximum. So what you, you calculate in this case is R is equal to V over I. And that's 5 divided by 0 0.04. which is equal to 125 ohms. So in theory, you can select an R value which is bigger than 125 and is smaller than 5 mega. This is times 10 to the 6. Um, and you would be fine. So a typical value, and which is actually inside of this microcontroller, would be 20 kilo ohm. And that is because you're losing very little current so you're not you're not drawing 40 milliamps constantly from your microcontroller, but at the same time you're within this boundary, uh, and you can make this the switch through this resistance quickly. So I mean you can use 37k, you can use 10k, you can use 100k, anything within this range really. But you want to avoid just simply draining draining current while the circuit is simply sitting there because it is going to sit there until you remove it or you change the resistance essentially. Um, so I'm guessing that's all that we need, needed to cover for this section so make sure to subscribe let me know if you wanted if you had any additional questions based on the first tutorial and if you want me to cover something differently thank you very much bye